we are now going to identify the role of the energy and momentum operators in wave equations. We are going to use that any wave can be thought of as a superposition of plane waves. For a light wave, each component is characterized by a simple relation between the magnitude of the wave vector and the angular frequency, which involves the speed of light. By introducing the reduced Planck's constant into this relation, we recover the relativistic relation between energy and momentum according to the Planck and de Broglie rules. And this relation, of course, still holds when we multiply it by the corresponding plane wave. But by promoting the constants that appear here to the corresponding energy and momentum operators, this equation will not only hold for any plane wave component, but indeed for any wave. Let me decode what we have written down here. For this, we simply replace the energy and momentum operators by their explicit expressions. When we then cancel the common factor of minus h bar squared on both sides of this equation, we simply recover the wave equation for a light wave in one spatial dimension. Let us now have a look at what is going to happen if we apply these ideas to a point particle whose energy is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. Note that classically such a particle would not move with a constant speed. We can now convert this relation into a corresponding wave equation when we again replace the energy and momentum by the corresponding operators and apply these operators to a wave function. As it happens, this is indeed the correct quantum mechanical wave equation for a point particle moving in one dimension, the simplest version of the so-called Schrödinger equation. We can decode it again by introducing the explicit form of the operators and then realize that this is a certain partial differential equation. As we will discuss next, this equation is easily generalized to particles moving in three dimensions and possesses a number of very general useful features. So here are some key features of the Schrödinger equation. First of all, it is easy to write it down in a more general form for a point particle moving in three dimensions. accounting also for situations where the potential energy depends on time. And we can write this in a slightly more compact form when we group the spatial coordinates into a position vector and replace the derivatives by the Laplace operator. But we can go even further. For this, note that in the motivation of this equation, we relied on notions of energies and momentum, therefore on a version of classical mechanics, which is known as Hamiltonian mechanics, in contrast, say, to Newtonian mechanics, which relies on the resulting forces. In particular, the sum of the energies on the right-hand side represents the total energy of the particle, which technically is also known as the Hamiltonian. Indeed, the corresponding operator that we encounter here in quantum mechanics is also known as the Hamiltonian. And with the help of this operator here, the wave equation becomes very compact indeed. On the mathematical side, the Schrödinger equation is a linear partial differential equation. And because of its linearity, it always obeys the superposition principle. This feature can be utilized to simplify it further when the potential energy does not depend on time, which is known as a stationary system. In this case, we can use the method of separation of variables to isolate the time dependence and the position dependence in the wave function. Note that the time dependent piece here oscillates with an angular frequency in accordance to the Planck rule, where E is now just a constant. When we insert this separated form into the Schrödinger equation, we find that the spatial part of this wave function obeys a simpler version of this equation in which the energy operator is replaced by this constant. I will show you the detailed steps in a minute, but feel free to try this for yourself. 
This simple equation is known as the stationary Schrödinger equation. It describes a quantum system with a fixed energy, of which we will soon study several examples. Note that mathematically it also takes the form of an eigenvalue equation, where the energy is the eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian. So here are the promised steps of the derivation of the stationary Schrödinger equation, with the key points being that the energy operator becomes replaced by a constant, as the exponential function is its eigenfunction, and that the time-dependent part then cancels. Let me conclude with some general remarks. Note that while I took some time to motivate the Schrödinger equation, this is not a derivation. Both Compton scattering and the double state experiment are not central to this cause, and indeed the complete theory of photons, known as quantum electrodynamics, is much more complicated. Instead, we will soon elevate the Schrödinger equation to a postulate of quantum mechanics, which defines a comprehensive theory that contains classical mechanics and classical fields as particular limiting cases. The postulates also cover other aspects of quantum mechanics based on general mathematical features that we will prepare by looking at one-dimensional examples. This concludes the first part of this course.